Hello, this is LJ Bothell with a Microsoft Excel video on chart design. So I'm going to make a quick chart and then we're going to look at the different things you could do with the chart in order to touch it up and personalize it and do things that you need to do with it beyond what the standard chart making option in Excel is. So I have a table here that I'm going to design a chart for or put together a chart for and then work on. So click in the table, and I know it's a table because it's got the table design and the table has a name, monthly sales. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to insert using a recommended charts. And what I'd actually like to do is a clustered column chart. So I'm going to come here. Here's a clustered column. I'll just go ahead and grab this, and there's my chart. Now I'm going to move it. I'm going to make it a little bigger by grabbing the lower um, right-hand corner and just make it a bigger so that it stands out more and I can see what I'd like to do with it. Now there are different things you could do with charts. First off, charts will tend to come in and only mention chart titles. So you could chart, uh, title the chart anything you want um, based on the information you're sharing. So this particular table is um, projected in actual sales by month. And so I might just say um, monthly projected and actual sales 2022. I can do that and then get rid of any reference to the word title. Okay. In here, I can look at this and say, you know, that's an awfully small title. So I can come in here and select all of it and go to the home tab and make it bigger. Make it 18 points bigger. I can change the color of it, make it black. I can make it bold if I want, and I can say, you know, it's still a little small. Maybe I'll make it 20 points. You can do things like that. In here, you could select this and say, you know, these are really, really tiny. They're Calibri body nine point because I'm still in my home tab. What happens if I were to change it to 12? They all change. And this is really cool because in earlier versions of Excel, each of these numbers, even though they were part of a series, seemed to appear separately in separate little boxes. And it was very hard to, to be able to, to grab them all at once. So I'm going to do the same thing down here and maybe make these 10 points. I don't want to, oh, let's try 10.5 points. That's all right. So we could actually read them a little bit better. Now, in the charts, you can also click on it and go to the chart design, and you can change colors, and you can look at existing chart styles that are already pre-built in. So let's see if we could do a little of both. So depending on the style you want to use for the type of report you're putting together, maybe it's part of a presentation and you already know that they're going to be doing other things with fade ins and fade outs, or they're going to be wanting to see things in this kind of, oh, this gives you a chance to see call outs. So instead of seeing the chart with the numbers on the side, you could actually see a chart this way. This is kind of cool. Let's do that. Ah, that's very nice. Now I want to see if I can also change the colors. Right now it's using the standard color palette that comes with Microsoft Office, but I could choose this one, which is also part of this, a similar palette, but it just reorients the colors. And then depending on the type of chart you're using, you could always consider monochromatic. This one might work out because you clearly could see that there are separate items being considered each month and there's enough space between them that the colors don't blend. But depending on the kind of chart, like if I were doing this as a stacked column chart, the co uh, colors might seem too close together. I could also go in here if, if, if I didn't have to stick with any particular, particular theme. I could come in here and I could change the overall color palette. So if I wanted to stick with greens and blues or greens and yellows, so I'm going to do blue-green. So that gives me an option there, and then I can come back to the chart design and see in the change colors what my different options are here. So I might choose that one. So you have some choices there. You can go in also and change, you know, at the theme level, you can change the fonts. I'm just going to go ahead and keep them the same, but you have that choice. But what else can you do? Well, the format of the chart gives you all sorts of options where you can go down to the micro level. I could decide to change the background of the chart itself to a different color. So let's take a look at a solid fill. Whoa, now I can't see some of it. So I'd have to go in and I'd have to choose a color. 
Now let me bring this out a little further and look for a color here that's really light. You could do something like that. I could come in and do a pattern fill or something else. The thing you want to keep in mind when you do any of this kind of work is the first things first. Make sure everything's readable. If it's not easy to read, if you can't tell with, you know, pretty easy glance at what you're looking at, then you're missing the point of how useful a chart is supposed to be. So if I were to put a really busy pattern in there in a really dark color and have poor contrast, I'm going to go ahead and, oh, I think I'll go ahead and, you know, I'll still do a solid fill, but I just want to do a very light color with no pattern. So, yeah, there we go. But let's see if we could do a very light gray. There we go. So it's a little something there. You can also go in and you could format the shapes of the actual bars. Now, again, this is more of a granular level. Now, if I want the data series, let's see if I'm able to just do... I could change the gaps. I could change the border of things. But let's see here. What if I wanted to add a shadow? Oh, my gosh. Think of all these things you could do. <laughs> no, I don't want a shadow. Uh, do I want things to glow? Let's see if there's a preset here. Oh, look at that. So, I mean, you can do things like this in here as well. But again, keep in mind, your chart really needs to be visually useful. So less is usually more. What else can we do here? Uh, well, let's take a look at these, these tools over here. When you click, what does this do? It tells you the different chart elements that you have appearing. So if I wanted to have, let's say if I went back to, um, let's go back here. And if I went back to a standard chart format where you have the axis um, titles and data uh, titles, this is where I would be able to put this in. I could possibly drag this up and I could possibly um, then format this to uh, change its orientation. So the text options here, I don't want the fill, but what I want to know is if I can rotate it in some way. So right now it is in a, and I'm just clicking on different things over here. The text box, the vertical alignment is center, 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 middle, but I could get it so that it is horizontal like that. And then I could bring this over here and then I could name this. So I could say, you know, uh, sales, sales like this. And then I could do the same things down here with the access title down here. Then I would say months. And then I could decide if I wanted in here to turn some things off. So I'm going to click over here, look at this. And right now I am seeing data labels and I'm going to turn those off because they're a little bit busy and I don't necessarily need to see them unless I chose that other style. You know, I could turn the legend off, but the legend wouldn't make much sense of, of what the colors mean. So the legend is something you would normally want to keep on because then it expresses. But maybe you want this to be a little wider. You can take your legend and you can take and move it up just a little bit. You know, you can, you can move things around like that. What's this? This gives you a chance to, again, choose other chart styles from here instead of from the ribbon. I still like this one a lot. <laughs> and then you can come here and you could do some filtering. So maybe you don't at the moment want to see all of them. Maybe you want to, to just see January, February, and March. Now that's interesting. Did that really do anything? No. Maybe it's because the table itself has got everything selected. I was hoping that, uh, so for some reason, uh, maybe it, you know, this is something you'll need to play with on your own. Oh, I know what happened here. So let's keep this and let's do that and let's apply. There we go, because you have to kind of tell it to do something. So in this case, we're still working off the same table of data, but we decided for this chart, we just wanted to filter it by three months. But then you can, you can go back here and you can change that and select all again. And then when you do that, select all, then you have to remember to apply. 
etc. So those are just a few things you could do with the charts. So let's go and see what else is up here in the ribbon. You could add a chart element, but that's basically just the same as um, when we were adding things like the axis title. But you could add other things like uh, uh, another data label or error bars, depending on the type of chart. So that's what that's about. Quick layout. This can give you some ways of approaching how the information in the existing format you've chosen allows. You can squish them together. It looks like books when we're here, right? Mm. So you have those sorts of choices. Um, as I said, you can change colors. Um, you can come over here to format and then you can, in this case, you would be tempted to name the chart. I want to see if I can do this. Uh, sales chart. And then hit tab. So it's actually named this particular chart. And then um, I can go in and format a specific selection. Format that if I want, and it will pull open the format data series again. Um, I can reset to match style. Um, and then I could add other things. Maybe if I'm in here and I wanted to say, you know, this part of the year is really good, I could come in here and I could insert a shape. So grab that, insert this add a little, you know, make the outline red and then make it bigger. So add more weight to it. And then I can make a point like best sale of the year or something like that by also coming in and insert, adding a text box. select that, make it bigger so it stands out. So this is not technically part of the chart element, but I can go ahead and add these things to a chart. And there we go. Bring that over and, and so on. So you have a lot of things you could do. Eh, and you have to make sure what you're, well, no, what did I do? <laughs> Need to click and you know move things around you can do all sorts of things so i hope that was helpful to you to help you feel a little bit more comfortable about things you could do to a chart when it comes out looking just kind of default you can personalize it you can make it look nice you have textures and things you can add you can get as nitty-gritty as you want but again, the rule of thumb on any kind of chart, as is with any kind of visual that you put in any document, whether it's a Word document, Excel document, PowerPoint, make sure it's absolutely necessary for the message you're trying to get across. Don't be superfluous. And then make sure that when you do something like a chart, that you have good contrast, that it's easy to read, that you are keeping in mind um, as I am not in these videos, that you are keeping in mind that maybe some of your audience has some inability to see some colors on the spectrum. So if you're going to do things by color, you might want to add something else like color and texture to these bars. So that way, not only can they tell the difference between the height of the bars, but maybe the bars for um, the projected have a different background color and texture to them. So if a person can't see the color, they can see the texture. So you want to keep those things in mind. Oh, and one more thing you want to do with charts. Let me click on this. I want to see about alt text. Is there a place for alt text? Because technically a chart is, in fact, an element that should be considered as part of accessibility. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and check. We'll see if I check accessibility. That's not the same thing. Let's click down here. Ah, good. Let's see if that when you click the whole chart element and you go to the review tab, check accessibility, if there's a place you could put in alt text. Yes. Okay. So image of a chart of Prisvard Tech Sales, or let's see, um, Segment Sales by Month. So this way, when you do an accessibility check on this particular document, you will not get a pop-up saying, you know, a screen reader doesn't know what this is. So usually it should be built in somewhere around the chart options 
or the text options, but I don't always see it showing up equally in every version of the formatting areas. So if you can't find something here that indicates the option to put in um, some alt text, and I'm just scrolling around taking a look, um, and for the chart options, because you think the, uh, the alt text should go in for the chart itself, let's take a look down here. No, it's not offering anything there. Then the next best thing to do is go to your review tab, use the check accessibility little icon there, click the drop down arrow and choose alt text and add it. So, all right, there you go. Thank you for sticking with this.